Hi, I'm Jeff Bond, your instructor, and welcome back to another painting video. Today, we'll be painting a nice clean sky with a tan of green and a vast grassland with very fine tiny grasses. Also, we'll be taking a long tray in the middle of all that, which will really bring you a real fine taste of calmness and the beauty where you may find it in a piece. If you're excited to see this, be sure to like and subscribe for more such painting videos. Alright, let's get started. As you can see, I've taken a flat 1.5 inch brush and just dipped it under the green, hoker's green. And then just doing the crisscross section to create that nasty little sky. We're just covering the entire sky. So let me just tell you what I've already done with the canvas. Just before that uh, starting that painting, I have put it up a very thin coat of liquid white above that masking tape. You can see that masking tape. That is going to be our horizon. So above that is the sky and below that is our grassland. So as you know that uh, liquid white will be giving us a very good space to flow the colors all over the screen. So I'm just creating the sky above that masking tape. No need to worry about the line of the horizon to be perfect because the masking tape is going to do it for us. Now with that crisscross strokes we can create a nice sky without any problem. Some of those negative spaces are actually be the right thing in our sky. Now that's what I'm doing with the same brush just this corner I'm creating those sky lines, the flat skies. And then just blending it, that'll be creating the exact thing which you're looking for. Just the exact same pace. I hope you're creating this painting along with me with your paints. Now, just a little bit of black I'm adding. Just a little bit of black with the hook screen to give it a darker shade. I want that uh, skies to be a little bit more contrasty. So that's why I'm adding a little bit of black. Black is actually giving us more highlight. You see? The darker it is, the more highlight it would be. But I'm not going to give it much more bright because then it will going to ruin the space that we need in our sky. Blending is very very important as you can see that will actually giving us the exact amount of light and shades required to look it more perfectly. Amazing. Now a little bit of yellow ochre on the left side that will give us some of the kind of lighting shade that is coming from the left side. So maybe it's the sunlight or maybe it's, it's actually not the direct sunlight, it is filtered through the skies. But that is why it's a little bit. that 
now a little bit green as well I need it to be blended it all over the sky you don't need to push it much harder but that is actually required what we want it right here crisscross strokes are very much easy and necessary for the skies again the hooker screen and now I'm going to create some skylines far beyond that is near those horizons you see how easily that can be created oil paints are very very easy to work with if you know how to blend it or how to control it acrylic is actually a little bit difficult as i think regarding the blending part but oil is very easy for the blending but yeah again the oil is not very easy to create some of the strokes that are very very easy in the acrylics as acrylics are really fast drying so the next layer is easy to just put on without waiting for the first layer to be tried As you see a little bit of yellow texture, I want it over the sky, just look it a bit more realistic that way. Some light, it should not be the same color, the same contrast, so that's why I'm changing it in different location, a little bit of different contrast. Now that's the titanium white. So that is actually for holes and the depth in the sky. The clouds are now a little bit of shinier. There are more contrast and more clarity or sharpness in the skies. Clouds. Now I'm just fluffing it up. It's very very necessary while you're creating the sky and the clouds fluffing is very necessary and the left to right right to left very gently strokes these are very necessary it could actually blend your paint without any much distraction now about 10% of hookah's grain and approximately 90% of that titanium white that I'm that's what I'm mixing up. It's a very very bright grain. And I'm gonna show you that why I have created that little piece of bright grain. I know that most of the people just thinking about how was that green color doing in the sky but believe me the skies are really of different shades sometimes it's orange or red blue is just the normal color sometimes maybe it's yellow Now we're creating a little bit of clouds, a little bit of extra fine looking clouds. I don't want it to be very bright, so that's why we have mixed a little bit of green in it, just to give it an undershade.
can see how easily that could be created now a little bit of titanium white just on the edge of that one inch brush and then just on the tip of the clouds i'm just putting some highlights just a little bit i don't want it to be too much of the paint that could actually ruin my previous work my work on the previous layer i don't want it to be get ruined so that's why just a little bit of just on the other clouds as well, as well every clouds are actually very simple in the way if you know how to blend it properly blending is very very necessary for the cloud part now a little bit of titanium white i'm just lowering the depth of the middle sky just because i'm going to put up so just to highlight that tree i need the background to be a little bit more white Now the horizon line, you see, I'm just putting some of the horizon lines again and that's with the flat brush. You see how easily that could be created, it's very much. And now with that thing, we have actually created uh, the kind of blocking that will be highlighting the middle of the sky. Now a little bit of titanium white just to highlight the clouds just to highlight those little line of clouds these are very far clouds and just putting some titanium white and just remember that we need to put those titanium white lines above that cloud not below above that cloud this cloud is always going to be shiny on its tip not on the lower part so you can see that the plot cloud is now popping up and now some of the very very dark focus green yeah just to highlight the inner depth of those clouds just the inner depth not on the tip just the inner just to look at more contrasty some of the more tiny clouds with the same brush one inch brush you could create those uh, clouds with the even with the fan brush or maybe some other small brushes maybe maybe a fillboard brush maybe or some some other flat small brush but as this brush is already with me so i think that will be easier you can create it with different brushes that doesn't matter it's just that how you control if you can control a brush and that doesn't matter maybe with some of the brushes it's a little bit easier but that's fine
that's what the depth we have created here some more of the clouds and its contrast right yeah Now some more of the flat lines just create our sky looks like a bit more realistic. You see how easily that uh, those clouds are actually created with a lot and lots of that depth that actually pops out the skies and gives us a real sense of a realistic painting. Let's look at some of the parts where you can just put up some highlights with a so two inch brush will actually be uh, and that's a clean brush so we will actually be blending the inner part of the clouds and then we'll be blending the whole sky with it i'll see yeah just first blend the inner circle of that clouds just blend it blend it blend it Then, as always, just fluff it. Fluffing is really very important. Just fluff it, fluff it, fluff it, nice and easy. Just fluff it. Every little part of it. the all of the sky just give it a smooth little finish and then again with a one inch brush I'm just putting a little bit of more more in depth with those clouds I think those are just leftovers I need to put a little bit of more contrast that's what I wanted and then again with the clean brush just fluff it fluff it and then left to right that's an easy way to blend your skies. Now, with a one inch brush, we'll be taking the hookah screen and then need to create the grassland. In order to create that, we will not be using it vertically, we'll be using it horizontally. As you can see, the brush is flat. Flatly, we are just creating those crowns. We just needed it to be the uneven ground, so that's why. We want those steep little strokes and that needs to be different shades all over that part of the ground.
you don't need to be just the same green color pattern all over the crown so that's why it's a little bit of darker somewhere and maybe some somewhere it's some lighter shades maybe you can use the other bands as well as uh, you see I'm using the yellow ochre here just to create a different difference in the ground so here where I'm using the yellow ochre that's where I'll be creating a tree and most likely where the tree is so that's where I think grass are not that green or maybe it's a little bit of soily ground around the tree so that's why I've used yellow ochre Now, can just cover up this whole area and just remind in the grassland we don't need any negative spaces. We need to cover the whole ground. Different colors, that's fine, but we need to cover the whole ground. We don't need any of the negative space. using the different shades of green, yellow ochre and a little bit of lemon yellow as well. Mostly it's the focus green that will be giving us the grass. You can create uh, some of the areas maybe if you want to show some light areas some brighter areas then maybe you can use some of uh, lighter shades of the green very lighter or maybe a mix of yellow in it right now I'm just using the dark colors because I need this ground need to be not too much of exposed to the light it's just a regular ground and we don't have that much light coming from the sky so that's why it's just maybe a cloudy day so that is why it's not too much of a shining grass. Grasslands needs to be imperfect, just like that. And then just a little bit of titanium white that will be giving us lighter shades as well. You see how easily those part of the grassland is now covered up. Grasses are still needs to be created, right? So we're just taking out the masking tape and that is where our horizontal line, our horizon line is now there. And I'm just placing that the same masking tape again just above that line because I need to fix that negative space as well I need to cover it up so that's why I've placed masking tape again so I need not to worry about the straight line and I can just do it that easily
Now again cover that the whole negative space again with the focus screen just cover it slightly gently because the tape has no more that kind of uh, glue in it so that's why you need to be very careful otherwise tape got off and you paint you're gonna ruin the line stick it properly and tightly and now very gently just cover that space So now we have almost covered that and then titanium white just to give it this horizon a bit of fog look. some of yellow ochre as well uh, so just cover the whole area Now we're taking out that masking tape Now we'll be taking that uh, our fan brush So with the fan brush it's very easy to create those small grasses Just pull it up you see because it's very very far So I'm just using it to be very gently just Pull it up just very gently. As close at it as it will be getting in we'll be raising the amount of making the greater grass bigger grasses see just Slightly pull it up and it's that easy. So I think a little bit of more paint is required because uh, for the grasses you need to have a good amount of paint that's going to work for you. Thank you. 
some of the more paint will actually be easing our work to create these grasses because the fan brush can only lift up the color so if there is no color if there is no thicker color then it might not be lifting up anything so that's why we need those uh, thick paints and now again with the fan brush we're just lifting it up just to create those tiny little grasses we won't be needing much sharper or the clearer grasses because that's a ground too far away so that's why just the some of these tiny little grasses are actually going to work for us you see when the grasses are getting up it's actually the ground is blending as well It didn't be looking like as before. Just the normal amount of putting it up. So whenever you're creating those kind of grasses, like there are different grasses for different shades. Uh, for the small grasses, just the fan brush can work. And for the longer grasses, you need to have those uh, brushes called liner brushes. Liner brushes are also of different size. Now with the same brush we are creating that tree which I was telling you just a nice little tension. Always remember the tree, tension is very important where you want to go for the tension. The tension is not there in the tree, it won't look like a normal natural tree. So for that tension you need to remember that your brush won't go in like a zigzag kind of thing or like a very smooth one. You need to bend your brush at a certain point just bend it unexpectedly give it a sharp turn you see smooth turn won't be getting in for a tree it won't work for a nice tree branches will also be will always be getting in a nice tough turns As I'm creating some of uh, things in the trunk, those are the branches which are no more there with the tree. It may have been broken, or maybe it's yet not uh, evolved so far. So that's what it is.
now just the fan brush I have mixed it with uh, much of black a little bit of uh, focus green as well a little bit amount of red as well and then just for creating those nice tree leaves and to cover that ground just fluff it with the fan brush you see it's very easy to create a tree like that there are different kinds of trees and there are different ways to create them so one of the ways is just to stroke like that you see how I'm covering the ground it's really easy to create such trees without any distraction you don't need to create every leaf but you will be creating a lot more detail that will be showing when a uh, tree is going to be completed then you'll see that how detailed work it could be this way So place some darker shades first and then I'm going to place some lighter maybe uh, a dark uh, green. Our baseline for this painting is the base color is uh, the hookah's green right just placing it like that way. titanium white as well that is to create those some of those shiny parts maybe the negative parts holes in this tree because the paints are too much over there and it will not be doing any good for you so that's why I'm just wiping it off so that it will be easier to put on the next layer just with the paper tissue just took out those extra paints just take out as much as you can it won't do anything good for you it's just the extra paint another way to do is uh, to wait for days and just let them dry maybe there are different ways and uh, they could be a different textures but we want to create that painting at a very fast pace so that's why we've taken that decision now with a small flat brush i'm just taking that uh, white titanium white and then just crisscross style putting on some of the shiny leaves some of them just on the outer edge I don't want to be in the inner edge because the inner edge will always be much more darker because light is not that much allowed there and that's it just that way maybe you can use uh, some kind of filbert brush as well to create those leaves it doesn't matter as soon as you have the control of the brush there were different strokes and there were different results but that's fine Now, just with the same brush, I'm just putting it on 
some more just to make that uh, underpainting a little bit of more contrasty more shades needs to be there I've mixed a little bit of uh, that hope is green as well Now with the one and a half inch brush, I've taken the orange color just to create those tiny little leaves all around. Just those leaves. You see how easily with the orange. Some more of the orange, the darker shade in the middle of it. As much uncontaminated orange you can place in there, that will be better. Because every time you put on the brush on the painting, that is actually extracting some of the paint from the underpainting. So that's why it's better to just wipe off the brush. Maybe if not, uh, you're not washing it, then at least just wipe it off. That'll do the work and just tapping it we don't want it to be strokes like uh, any other kind of strokes this tapping is the kind of stroke that will actually helps in creating those leaves just tap it Just to create some of the leaves at the edge as well because uh, we don't want it to be a sharp edge because when the leaves are there then the edges can be sharp in a natural environment so that's why some of those leaves are out of those edges again some of more orange tone match as much as near you're going the darker the orange out part is the highlighting part so that's why it's much less darker and it needs to be brighter now some of the these leaves are on the ground so that's why i'm creating some of those leaves on the ground Find on the cross, then will be giving you the exact uh, view and perception of the reality. That view is very far away, so you can't uh, see the crosses in a very sharp manner. But uh, again, it needs to be blurred. But uh, there has to be some some grass-like things. So that's why we're creating that. Just fluffing it, fluffing it, and. The grass is with you, just fluffing it.
Now, with the fan brush, I've taken a little bit of uh, that uh, black, ivory black, to create the shadow of that tree. Since the light is coming from the left side, left upper side is actually the northwest, so that's why the shadow isn't that far. Just a blurred shadow, you don't want it to be a very darker shade. Now some of more and I've taken a little bit of uh, focus green just to give it a more contrasted look you see. Now the leaves are not contrasted because every wherever the light is there there needs to be some darkness. Without that you can't see what light can do, what uh, the highlight is actually. So that's why some of the darker colors needs to be there. I just need not to be sharp because the leaves are there it could go haywire and that's why we have created them outside the edge now I've taken a little bit of uh, that uh, burnt sienna brown and I'm giving it some shades in the trunk that could be seen if you zoom that picture, but uh, that is necessary to give it a defined look. Just scroll the older trunks a little bit so that uh, it looks like more realistic some of the branches inside the tree yeah so for that I have changed the brush to a liner brush there's a short liner brush we don't need it to use the longer liner brush that uh, is actually for the longer grasses and for some of the very thin, thin uh, branches but we don't need that we can work with this one just just some of the branches go inside the trees the, those are now visible
the branches inside the tree won't need to be perfect it needs to be like uh, there's a gap in the branch so that uh, it looks like it is gone under the tree some of the branches are like coming outside the tree that's what i'm creating right now just some of the branches Now just creating some of the branches that are coming out of the tree and those are having less of the leaves on it. The leaves are actually shredded out. Just some of the branches. And you can put some of the gaps in it. It needs not to be very perfect or sharp branches. Because those branches are actually coming in the contact with the light. So that's why when the light is reflecting on it those are looking light like a little bit hazy they're not so sharp need not to be some of the branches just As I said that uh, there needs to be right tension in the branches or the tray so that's why just look at more natural we need to give it a right tension. set just those branches coming out of the tree giving them uh, some gaps in the branches will actually be giving you the kind of look that those branches are too much exposed to the light now some of the branches inside the tree as well there needs to be a right gap so that uh, it looks like the branches are getting inside the tree yes inside inside those leaves I just want to create some branch right over here in the trunk, the low trunk. Just extending that. Don't want to ruin all the effect. Just some of the branches.
give those branches a little bit more darker shades because the light is not here on the back side of the tree some more darker shades it's just a mix of focus green and black and some of the brown as well okay Is giving it some more contrast in those branches on the back side of the tree. Some more contrast. Now with the same line of brush, I'm just creating some of the those leaves which are on those outer branches some just some not more there's a mix of uh, green and yellow and the titanium white to give it a nice shine green some leaves in the on the tree as well the more the paint the more it's better because uh, otherwise it will be just blending in the previous layer of the paint that you don't want it to be That's it. Leaves are now almost done. The outer edge as well. Now some of the yellow I've taken on the brush and just trying to give it some leaves a shade of shiny yellow on it. That's it. Just a little bit taste of the yellow. On the outer edges as well mix on the those outer branches 
too much, just very fine details. That's it. Yellow is actually working us out in the form that uh, it's shining the light. So the backside of the tray doesn't need the, those yellow shadings just on the upper part, the brighter part, and those branches covered. painting I've learned that uh, it's very easy how easy to create those trees and the grasses as you can see that uh, this painting really gives me a breathtaking view it always serene my thoughts and my mental peace inside the house somewhere in the living room or maybe in the bedroom it's very very good Alright, I think we're done with each and every part just as you wanted to. I really enjoyed making this piece, I hope you did too. Don't forget to see our website for more painting related stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll hope to see you in the next video tutorial with a new and exciting paint. Until next time, thank you.